Hello there. Good morning. If you just join us here on the show, and you're most welcome to uh, Prime Morning. And here on the show, we bring you all the things you need to make sure your mornings become the very best. And we've been at it since uh, 6 a.m. We're still going. And uh, we're coming up to this very segment, of course, is our Relationship Thursday. As always, what we do is we try as much as possible to get into some relationships out there, you know, marriages for that matter, and get to find exactly what has been going on, how we can together make them work and uh, possibilities of also exploring some experiences that have been shared by couples, the relationship, uh, you know, people, and how they are hoping to also achieve the best out of whatever it is that they have started. And today, uh, we want to turn our attention to our love series. And of course, it's all about the Valentine. And we're excited about the fact that you've also been uh, vigorously part of it. Now, some of the messages you've sent to us in terms of your pictures have been very, very creative. And we're excited about that as well. So keep them coming through. But we'd like to once again remind you that you still need to make sure that you're sending yours if you have not done that yet. Now, that's if you are in a relationship or you're married and you want to be a part of the winners that will eventually have that, that special uh, treat that we're giving them. So we've got a dinner for two. We also have a weekend stay in a luxurious hotel. And also we're giving you something as uh, relaxing as massage at uh, a spa that will definitely take good care of you. All of these we're giving and even some more. And so you want to be a part of it. Well, a quick thank you uh, to our sponsors, La Palm Royal Beach Hotel, Easy Grab. I would like to say a big thank you to uh, Dodi Weld at Kusumbo Volta Hotel. Uh, we're grateful for all the support you've given us so far. And also, we'd like to say a very big, big, big thank you to my artist spa. Uh, they're making sure that our winners get to have a very soothing and relaxing massage and uh, you want to go there now if you've heard about them and you've not tried them yet you're losing our big time so you want to make sure that you go and uh, check that out as well now yesterday we began a conversation over here on the show we spoke to a couple that have been married for 43 years now they shared the experiences the difficulties in the marriage and how they've been able to move beyond all the unexpected now don't also forget that here on the show, the husband shared an experience of uh, giving birth out of wedlock. Uh, the women, uh, you know, who have gone through all of that will tell you that it's not an easy journey. Now, the woman on the show uh, slightly cheered up, but of all of that, she still had to forgive and make sure that she stayed with the man. She's so much loved. They've got about four kids, uh, three boys and a lady, and they are so excited about how uh, much they've grown and what they've become here in this country and today we want to expand it a bit uh, and then check out what are some of the things that uh, marriage couples are doing right or wrong uh, why are we seeing a lot of marriages break up and what we can do to make sure we put them together and make them last longer now uh it was once said that husband and wife relationships are like the relationship of tom and jerry though they are teasing and fighting but cannot live without each other how is yours in your relationship to help me with the conversation this morning i've got on the uh zoom and they'll be helping us uh, immensely uh reverend of kakari anno is actually the head pastor christian center assembly of god in kumase uh, he's joining me on zoom this morning and also i have a married couple but the wife is actually joining us on uh, the zoom today mrs senam uh alon yaku uh, he's, she's an entrepreneur. Uh, she's the CEO of April's Delight Catering Services. And she's been married for four years. And those are my guests on the show today. So uh, you can send your messages to us on our WhatsApp line. It's very active. You can share your experience of your relationship with me as well. I'd be more than glad to hear from you and how many years you've spent so far and how long you intend to go. You can also send us on our social media platforms. It's Joy Prime TV on Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter. And uh, we'll be looking forward to reading from you this morning here on the show. So let's get on with it, uh, shall we? Uh, first of all, let me go to Mrs. Senam. Mrs. Senam, good morning, if you can hear me. Hello, Mrs. Senam, can you hear me? Okay, so let me, uh, please, if you can hear me, or mute your microphone, if you can hear me, uh, or mute your microphone so I can hear you talk to me, okay? Uh, whilst you're at it, let me try and see if I can connect uh, with uh, Reverend Osei Kakaria. No, uh, Rev, if you can hear me, good morning. Good morning. 
Okay, great. So Reverend can hear me, and uh, I can also clearly hear him here. So Reverend is actually the head pastor of uh, Christian Center Assembly of God uh, in Kumase. He's been very helpful uh, to us here on the show, and uh, today it's also a pleasure to have him on the show as well. Rev, uh, thank you so much for making time for us this morning. Yeah, you're welcome. Great. So uh, I'll start off uh, by asking about the institution of marriage. Now, yesterday we had a couple over here who shared with us uh, uh, you know, some of the moments and what exactly they view marriage uh, from where they sit. They've been married for 43 years. Now, I want to find out from you what exactly it means to say, oh, there's something called institution of marriage. Yeah, I, institution of marriage. Marriage is something that um, God himself uh, instituted. He started all the way back um, in the, the first day or the time of creation. God himself uh, brought it up, instead it and brought it up in, in the Garden of Eden between um, Adam and Eve. That is the first one that we know. Then we jump to the case of um, Sarah and then um, um, Abraham, then Isaac and Rebecca. So it goes on and on. Now um, we read from the book of Genesis chapter 1, when God started, started creating things and um, it gets to the stage where the Bible said that he created everything in pairs, like the male, female. Then he created the man and realized that he was also alone and therefore decided to create a help mate fit for him, a help mate fit for him. So that is something that, that started all the way back in Genesis. And, and that is the first couple that, you know, that is, I mean, if where God was actually um, the man or the, the father, the mother and everything behind that, 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 marriage so that is the first one that you know god actually brought it up all right so uh in that case one would want to find out um what was it now i mean in no entirety it was necessary that we had to continue creation and so it's one of the reasons why are there other reasons why people feel like there's the need for me to leave my home and join another person who is coming from a different background and say together we want to just live here and and stay as couple i mean beyond the issue of creation or recreation, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. What I know is that is when you look at the account in the book of Genesis, you realize that God actually created everything, you know, the, the birds, the animals, then um, the trees and everything. Then he also made Adam in charge of everything to take care of everything, to uh, make sure that everything was intact and also created the rivers inside before the, the woman came into, into the picture. And what I can say is that God didn't give if to a boy, he gave if to a man, okay, a man who was fully employed, who was fully engaged, who had accommodation and everything. In other words, marriage, before it comes in, we'll have to, you know, at least have certain things in place like uh, accommodation and uh, job, and, and we have to be occupied. God did not give to a, uh, an ideal man, a man who was fully occupied. Then the woman came into the picture. Now, when God in the in Genesis chapter two, the last part, he said that the man will leave the father and the mother and cling to their wife. He never said that the wife will leave. It was rather the man who will be leaving, and and that should tell you that. But but you see, practically, it is always the woman who comes to join. Mm. But in practical, that is what we see. But but according to the scriptures, it's the man who leaves. Now the living here is not just the fiscal movement. It's not about the fiscal movement. It's about the, the mindset is about authority, is about a, a, a being independent as a man. And what am I trying to say here? We are talking about the fact that the man is moving from under the authority of the parents, under the authority of anybody at all, so that he will be in charge, he will be responsible, and he will be um, actually acting as the head of the family. Now, the woman comes in to be with, let me say, another father of a salt, where um, the, the man will have to be in charge. Okay, that is not to say that the man is going to control, but I'm talking about the fact that they are the same in value, but distinct in divine calling. I'm talking about authority here, okay, as the man being the head of the family. Uh, and what it means that the man is not supposed to be manipulated by anybody when it comes to taking decisions. You can take advice and can also take counseling from the parents, but the man is not supposed to allow the parents to decide how, he will run the family and all that. That is why the Bible says that the man will leave. Okay, now the woman comes in as a help mate, fit for the man. So it's not every woman who will be fit for any man at all, mm. but for the, you need a particular woman who will fit for your assignment and for your tax. 
and the woman is coming to help. Now, if somebody is coming to help, then you don't leave the responsibility for that person. Then the person should also not come and say, I know more than you because you're coming to help me. I have to detect the pace and detect how things will run. As a matter of fact, one of the things that, are, apart from marriage being companionship, now procreation or childbearing is just a gift. So you know, talking about marriage, it's not about children. It is about a children are just a byproduct of the institution of marriage. It's just a byproduct, it's just a gift that God has to the, the, the couple. So if you don't have, it is still a family. If you have, it is a miracle. If you have, it is a gift. If you have, it is, it is a blessing. If you don't have, it is it's not because you are cursed. It is just that God is all, in God's own time and God's own way will decide to add or not but add. But, but the man and the woman actually forms the institution of marriage and nothing else. Okay. Now, what, one of the things that we, apart from the procreation, the, the main thing for marriage is about the companionship. Companionship. That is the original intent of God, the original intention of God. He saw that the man was alone and decided to create unto the man a helpmate just like the man. So it was not about childbearing, although procreation was part of it, but it was not about that one, but it was about companionship. That, that is the original intention of God for bringing in the woman. And one of the things that all of us have to understand is that um, the reason why the man lives and the man, I, I'm talking about the fact that the man becomes the head of the family is that, you see, when when uh, the devil came into the Garden of Eden in chapter 3, um, he never went to the man, he went to the woman. And the woman entertained the devil. And any time that the woman decides to take up the responsibility himself without referring things back to the man, and the conversation becomes something else. And so, 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 so it is always the man in the institution of marriage being the head, living and taking responsibility and being in charge. Adam, anytime that Adam shared his responsibility, the, the devil had the opportunity of coming in and all kinds of trouble here and there. So the whole idea of marriage is that mm. of companionship. Then childbearing becomes a gift onto the companionship. And just like I'm saying, the woman is supposed to come in to help the man, for him to achieve whatever assignment that God has given to him. God gave Adam a very big task of naming every animal and making sure that everything in the garden will be well kept and well taken care of. And that is something that I know. I see. Very interesting one over there. But I'm, I'm sure we'll dig deeper into uh, some of the yeah. things that you have said, especially I know most of the women will disagree about that. Well, slightly disagree <laughs> <laughs> about that statement over there. But we're digging to the, that deep. I'll come back to you. But let me go and speak to our married people on uh, Zoom as well. So, uh, Senam, Mrs. Senam, if you can hear me uh, this time around, how are you doing? I can hear you, clearly. Good, good, I'm good, doing good. Great. <laughs> good to have you on the show. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Great. Good to have you too. Mm. And I also have Majid Iza. Majid Iza is also on Zoom. Majid, can you hear me? Majid, if you can hear me, I'll mute your microphone. Maybe we can also hear you if you do that. So, Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. Good, 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 good. I'm also well. Uh, thanks for asking. So, uh, so uh, uh, the two of you are married, uh, not the two of you by no, no i know and the two of you are all married couples i mean to say and uh, uh majid is from the the muslim side and uh Senan is also from the christian side okay so uh majid where where is your wife oh she went out to buy you know if you're married like this uh, at least your wife <laughs> have to get something you know i'm the busy time so i always take my breakfast late oh so she went out to um, bread and then prepare some one or two things as okay usual. So, okay as usual that's the helper uh reverend was talking about a uh, moment ago so yeah she's doing a yeah. job as a helper i hope you're also doing yours so oh i'm doing so <laughs> yeah okay we'll find oh, out so <laughs> okay so let, let me let me let me get to uh Sanam. Sanam, you've been married for four years five, five. Yeah. Is it, is it five or four? Uh, I will be having my um, five years anniversary this year, come April. Oh, so there's an anniversary somewhere. Oh, we are all coming. <laughs> we have to be at this anniversary. Yeah. It's going to be a great one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we have to be there. Know, we have to right? be there. Awesome. But I mean, congrats to you. Um, how has marriage been you. for you in, in particular? 
Hmm. Hey. I think um, it's not the it's not being. I mean, smooth. Mm. It's been sweet. It's been bitter. It's been you know, it's been all around. It's been like how the wedding cake is being prepared. You know, we have the bitter, the sweet, the sour, and all that. But you know, let me say in a nutshell, it's been good. <laughs> I mean, it's just like life. You have to enjoy a little bit of everything. Yeah. I see. And you've been doing that for four years now. Uh, did you see yourself coming this far from the beginning? Yes, because um, I think this whole thing was built on friendship. And I think friendship um, has been one of the things that has kept this marriage going. Because anytime um, there's a problem or I decide to maybe pull back or something, I just go back to remember the friendship we had before the marriage. So I always tell him that, look, <laughs> I decided to settle down with you because of the friendship we've had. Whenever we fight, I go back to the friendship we had. Whenever there's a problem, I go back to the friendship we had and I think it keeps me calm mm. because I really do not want to lose the friendship I have with my husband. Even if my marriage doesn't work, I still believe that the friendship should work. So in, in, in other ways, friendship helps the marriage work. I That's see. what I can say in the last year. Yeah. Okay, so friendship has been the solid rock for you. And uh, but moving forward, I, I want to find out how, how you actually, you know, do the things you need to do to make sure that you keep it going, especially when you know that the person has a certain flaw. So how do you handle some of his flaws just to make sure beyond the friendship you are still able to keep the relationship or the marriage going? Okay. I think first of all, uh, we are coming from a Christian home, okay. both of us. So Christ is our solid rock. And secondly, I think my, I have more flaws than my husband, <laughs> let me just say, because <laughs> um, most of the time, I am the one bringing problems here. Oh, no. My husband is the int <laughs> <laughs> introvert kind of a person. But, he always finds ways and means to just put me back on his track. Okay. So he's doing the man job that he's supposed to do, uh, like Reverend said as well. Let me get back yes. to Majid. Majid. Sir? How do you handle your home in terms of, you know, um, issues that comes up day in and day out? Um, how do you handle them? You know, uh, like, I was born the calm type. So it's not anything that I used to oh. talk about. Yeah. Sometimes I can come in, see some things like here, they place things here and there. I just take no, it's normal. Because you know, one thing to if you are married to your friend, not just a relationship, if you are yeah. married your friend mm. the, the 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 marriage is different from just being in a relationship for some time before you marry yeah. you see if yeah. you, if you marry to your friend you still you continue the way you used to be you can handle things together every anything there's some small girl with us anytime she sweeps the room she places things where they are not supposed to be, but I think it to be normal. I just come, just put everything in place. Hey, woman, why did you do this? Say, oh, that, that is because of this. It's okay. You just place it this way. We go, that goes on. Mm. So I don't have problem with, you know, I'm, I, I'm married to my friend. So we used to do things like, people even used to call us twins. <laughs> because anytime I move out, she follows me, unless I'm going to work. Sometimes if I go to work like this, or maybe I'm going to work like this, she follows me because my work is uh, installation of this kind of wallpapers and then painting decor and everything. Yeah. So sometimes she follows me, help me. Maybe if I need something, she takes it to me. Uh, to, for me, you know, if I'm married to your friend, it's somehow lovely. Mm. Uh, mm. That's what I, I, I have to. 
Uh, I wanted to know how long were you friends before you got married? Oh, we were friends for just one and a half year. Wow. That's just not that's not year. much. She, and you know, she she she's my junior back at uh, SHF. Too. So people were thinking, oh, ah, <laughs> are we dating before we completed or something? So, no, 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 no. I even completed like three, four years before we even get that kind of friendship and then just one and a half year you got married so people were ah is it that you people were friends back at school i said no mm. you know being friends is just short something but how to make it look uh, 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 like it's something very long yeah depends on both of Okay, so you guys made a decision on the friendship and you're, you're here right now. It's been how many years now after the marriage? So you had a one and a half years relationship. Uh, oh, let's say friendship. about 11 months now. Just next month, 13th, that we'll get one year. Oh, you guys are relatively new as compared to my four yeah, year old. Uh, yeah, very new. <laughs> Uh, Senam. Oh, I see. Congratulations to you guys, too. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Mm. So, Majid, what's, what's, what's the one thing uh, she does? I mean, beyond all the forgiveness and everything, uh, the friendship playing an important role and all. What's that one thing that she does that always irritates you, but you, you, you still don't do anything about it? Do you have any specific thing she always does? Yeah, sometimes I do advise her about, like, she's the type that... And if you, if you, like, if you shout on her, like, she become very, she become very bored. Okay. So sometimes she does something, I I look at her and say, no, this type of people, if you talk to them in a harsh way, mm. they will get angry. And I don't, I don't want her to be getting angry. I always keep her uh, uh, smiling always. So sometimes she does something that really hurt me. I don't talk. I just leave the room. Oh, okay. So that's the best way you handle it. You just leave her and then you, you, go, you go somewhere. I just leave and go have my... my uh, Fresh also before I comes out, uh, <laughs> before I comes in, she's also uh, done with everything that she, she does. So she, she just come to me. Oh, that I've seen that you are angry. You are this. You are this. Please forgive me. That's that is it. Oh, I see. I, I think we we saw your wife come in. Is she back with the the bread for the breakfast? No, no, no. She's not yet back. Okay, okay. Uh, tell her that we are waiting. There, somebody should tell her we are waiting for the breakfast, so she should bring it. But I mean, I'm intrigued <laughs> about your your way of handling this. And yesterday we saw a married couple for 43 years. The man also said the same thing. You know, Mr. Beniza said that he also, you know, just leave the house. And it looks like it's working for most men out there. But let me find out from Senam. Yeah. Uh, Senam, does it work for you too? If if Mr. do something and you feel like, oh, this one, if I'm, I'm not careful, I'll say something I'm not supposed to say. <laughs> Let me get that. Well, what, what do you do? How do you handle this? Seriously, most of the time, I decide not to talk. And you see these men, if you decide not to talk, it's a problem. <laughs> so I'm talking to you and you decide not to talk back and you're not friends. <laughs> <laughs> so I think usually uh, walking out of the scene as in the heat of the moment really works for me. And I think it works for him too. Most of the time, he wants to leave the scene. I think maybe there's there's a magic with working out of the scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it seems to do a lot of uh, magic for people. Because, uh, yes, if you're there, yeah. you're going to engage more. Uh, it will be heated. Um, exactly. uh, tempest yeah. will rise. And so <laughs> it, it looks as if that is the ultimate decision a lot of people take and all of that. So, yeah. But what was the biggest challenge you face? Uh, in, in your marriage that, uh, you know, you find difficult always, uh, apart from the flaws, you know, what's the, the, the difficulties you face in the marriage? Um, I think communication. Communication has... It's begin from the church. And then two years, three years, four years after, we're breaking apart. What exactly are we doing? In the past, it's not as, you know, prevalent as it is right now. What are we doing in modern times that is not really making us uh, keep this uh, vows that we, we you know we say for ourselves? Yeah, um, I, I, I have listened to the, the two of them, but I, I'm just smiling because I think that they, they, are, they are a little bit new. I have been married for 16 years now, one six. Far gone, yeah, far so, gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, being a pastor, I think that 
being the senior pastor for almost about 15 years now, I've come across a lot of, you know, uh, issues and married couples here and there uh, with their problems. So especially my, my Muslim brother, who is just one 11 months. Oh, he's so new. There is still more. <laughs> the honeymoon is still in place. And there is a lot of <laughs> excitement here and there. Yeah. So, so, and, and my sister, very handsome young man, definitely. Um, they are enjoying certain things now. I, I, I heard them talk about friend, my friend, my friend. Yeah. I, I think that even, you know, friends, it gets to a point where close friends we have start having problems. Mm. So, so yeah. it is, yeah, it is not just about, about, about the friendship. It's about something that we are missing now. Um, my, 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 my sister was talking about the fact that um, sometimes you want your voice to be heard. I think that is very important. It's very important that you also come out your voice. The reason why you're having the problem you're having now is because you are turning the whole thing upside down. Where the women want to be the head of the family and the men who have to uh, obey whatever they say. And you see, it is becoming practically uh, you know, accept, uh, accepted in the society that like women cause trouble. Mm. And I think a lot of women are taking advantage of that one to cause trouble because you know the women will make noise, they will talk a lot and all that. And, and, and possibly they are taking advantage of that one. The moment you let the men lose that kind of authority in the house, the marriage will collapse. Mm. We should go back to our period, the days of our our fathers and mothers where the men were the head of the family and the women were very obedient and they were respectful and all that. Listen, my brother, one of the things that all of us have to understand is that men can love you, a man can love you, a man can have affection for you, but we still not marry you. We don't marry for love. We don't marry for, for affection. We don't marry for sex. We marry for stability. That mm. is peace. That is what every man is looking for. Peace in the house. So a man, that is why we often hear a lot of men say, I love him, but I cannot marry her. Mm. Sorry, I love her, but I cannot marry her. Because you are looking nice, you are very beautiful, you have all the, you have all the appearance, you are good in bed, and still the man will go in for another woman somewhere because the man is looking for peace and stability. The man is looking for somebody who will come in and will not be bringing trouble, not come in and not be talking too much. The woman is also looking for a man who also come and protect and be there for him, show care and all that. So, so it is our time that you all get some of these things. That it's not just about your appearance. It's not just about your education. It's not about you talking too much. It's about giving the man peace in the house. And, sure. and, and now, yeah. And now because you are not having this thing and the fundamental human rights to them, the women are also trying to come up with their challenges. And that, that is why we are facing the problem that we are facing now. And we should let the women understand that they are supposed to be there as uh, with that kind of respect and humility and all that, not talking too much, not causing troubles, not asking unnecessary questions here and there. I've been asking myself, <laughs> no woman has been able to solve a marital problem by fighting a man because of another woman coming around. There have, have never been any woman who have been able to solve the problem, even if the man is cheating or the man is going out and not coming early and all that. There have, have never been any solution through you trying to talk to your man harshly and fighting him here and there. Anytime you are nice, I'm telling you that the man will be nice. Anytime that you don't cause trouble, the man will come home early. The, the, the woman should never create a home where the woman, the man will find difficult coming home early and all that. You should create an atmosphere of peace, an atmosphere that the man will love to be there because any time that you cause trouble, there is another lady somewhere who is ready to receive the man and give the man the comfort that he's looking for. That is one thing that you should all know and you should all understand. Our mothers understood some of those things where no matter what happens, they will say, Mira, the Pacho, and all that. And as a result, the men were always there for them. Now, to the men too, if you are always going to exert your authority by always shouting at the woman, the woman will also not... At the point in time, she will be fed up with your authoritative nature and also bounce back and talk back at you. Sure. You should be nice. You should be caring. You should be that protective. You should be a father. And you should be a husband to the woman and the children. You see, under no circumstance should you ever lift up your hand and, and hit a woman. That one, I, I will say that no matter how much the woman provokes you, provokes you, you should always work out. Just like our sister was saying and our brother was saying, the best way to some of some of this problem is to leave the house and come back when things are settled down. Because they can push you to the wall that if you're not careful, you are going to lift up your hand. And then another circumstance with a man do that. That one is unacceptable and it should not be something that should ever be talked about, even in the home at all. That is a problem that we are also having now. Sometimes they can push you. Let me just say it. And sometimes they can hold you. They can shake you. Yeah. And then, 
<laughs> yeah, they, they, they can actually they can really push you to the wall. And then that is the point that you have to leave the home for 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 the um, you know the man the woman to have his own. After a few hours, the woman will be calm. Then you can come home. Then, my brother, another thing that you have to talk about here is that mm. the way you were appearing before marriage and the way you were very caring before marriage, you must try as much as possible to maintain that same thing. The man you were buying chocolate, the man you were calling the woman, the man you were saying, I love you, you were saying all kinds of nice words, you should continue with that one. The woman you are appearing nice all the time, don't ever le- allow the, the coming in of the children and the coming in of, 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 of deliveries and other things and pressure change you so much. What am I trying to say? Your appearance should be maintained. Please, especially to our Christian women, don't let your, your husband only marry you just because of Christ, but because of your appearance too. Because of your, because of the way you keep yourself, we are having a situation whereby a lot of Christian women believe that after marriage I can just appear anyhow and my husband will still love me. No, it shouldn't happen that way. You must dress well, you must appear well. If there are simple makeup, do it. Be neat. Don't be smelling and expect your yeah. husband to still love you. It is not easy. I'm sorry. <laughs> it is not easy. Don't just sleep in the in, 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 sleep in the, uh, the sleep at the hall with some clothes covering your body and you eat anyhow you have become very fat you are not putting any measures on your body nothing at all and, and in the night even going to bath is a problem you are pushing your husband away are, are, you, are, you, are you getting sometimes with about two or three kids it becomes very difficult to keep everything yeah i, I am married to a lady like she is a medical doctor who works at the community hospital very busy yeah okay and, and sometimes this is why I also have my issues because sometimes you expect her to be doing so much. But then the more you push it, the more you realize that it, you know she's also uh, uh, engaged with a lot of things yeah. and you have problems here and there. But then you must always watch her back and cover up there. But you see, that shouldn't be an advantage that also take that you also will not keep yourself neat. Listen, the women we are calling slave queens and side chicks Ooh. are having their way into people's marriage because they know how to treat their husbands. You don't give excuses when it comes to sex unless you are practically sick or the man knows that you are extremely tired. Whatever it is, be there to give the sex to the man because if you don't give, another person will give. Have you ever, the ladies have ever, ever asked themselves, if my husband has not slept with him for two weeks, are you sure that it's just because he's too spiritual, it's just because he's too powerful, that is why he's not sleeping with him? Probably there is somebody somewhere. As a so don't be excited thing. and say, <laughs> No, there is somebody who is also taking charge of what you are not doing. So I'm saying that be respectful, be very humble, then be neat, dress well, at least compete with the slave queens when it comes to appearance. Try as much as possible to be there. Don't be loose. Don't just be, don't just take things for granted. And if, if when it comes to sex, put in your best. Don't just be lying down and expect the, the normal thing. As a mabre, as we need a baby, you know, that kind of attitude. You collapse your marriage. You are going to bring problems into your marriage. Be in your best position that you can be and do your best to keep your marriage going. And the same way, the man too. You see, you are, your tummy is becoming fat. Your sexual drive, your, 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 your erection is becoming weak. I, I think you called me for me to talk to. If I say anything, for, you know, uh, uh, yeah, we're, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> you, must, you must eat well. You must exercise. And you must also be ready to give your wife the best of sex and the best of carry. And, 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 and sometimes, you know, don't just act as if you are too busy. Don't be too busy. Play with your wife and play with the kids. Don't be too serious. Some men are too serious, especially the Christian ones. Yeah. Everything is about tongues. It is not, it's, 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 tongues will not solve the problems in the house. It will never solve it. Okay. The, in fact, I said it one time in church that we don't marry by faith. Like I don't have the resources to marry. I am not this, but I'll marry by faith. Whatever means I'll marry by faith and you don't have the resources to keep your house going. It is not about faith, it's about what you have. That is why God gave Adam a job. It's about how you can produce in the house. And when you when you when sometimes you have to be jovial, don't be like, well, you know, Kasa has a would you grow to do my at least smile, at mm. least engage her, at least you know, let the kids play around you, take them out and play around with them and all that. These are the things that will keep the 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 the, the marriage going. And the women should also not be too much of 
who called you and, and who is that lady? I'm saying that sometimes, even though you have suspicions, just be calm. Even though you feel like somebody's coming closer, just be calm. Because any time that you come with that kind of attitude of being violent and being that kind of noise making here and there, you push the man away more and more, and eventually you will fall into somebody's hands. The reason why we are having most of the youth marriage are collapsing is that we are marrying just like what you see on Nigerian movies and other movies, now Nollywood and Bollywood and other things. And it is totally different, totally different. Where you see the man and the woman running in, in through some flowers and all the time they are saying nice things. It gets to a point that you will not hear nice things, but you just have to accept <laughs> what you're hearing. You will not be running through the flowers. That is just a, that is just a movie. Anytime I hear somebody who says that you have been married for 10 years, you have never fought, I said, and that is not married that you have in there. You have issues. Yeah. But just like our sister said, and our Muslim brother, we are all coming from a certain background where we are looking at the, the marriage that Christ instituted and that of what we saw with Abraham and co. We must always, at every point in time, get back to Christ. In mm. the, John chapter 2, the first miracle that Jesus performed was at the wedding ceremony. What happened there? Okay. Mary says something. He said that whatever he tells you to do, do it. So whatever that Christ tells us to do, we should do it. We must go back to Christ. Okay. And that is it. All right, Reverend, I'll come back to you again. Let me let me find out from my uh, married, married man and woman. <laughs> How are you taking this from Rev? Is this something that is happening in your marriage? Or you're yet to experience that? Or you guys have gone through, you've gone past that already? I'll start with you, Sinam. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think um, I, I'm already going through that already. And that makes it natural. I believe so. I mean, uh, when it comes, I think I, I have a baby. Um, my boy is um, two and a half years. So I think after birth, um, I put on a little weight and he talked about it. I was like, hey, why is you? Eh, Mr. Mishana, you were not, you know, you had not put on weight like that. But I think even with that, I had a little issue with that because I was always thinking about it. How am I going to put myself back in shape, you know? So all of these things, I think they all come to play after the experience in it and I am taking note of what Rev is talking about, and um, if I have flaws anywhere, I think I would have to work um, on it. And thank you so much, Rev. You're very educated. I'm learning a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Majid, <laughs> I saw you laughing and laughing and laughing. <laughs> What's your case like? Uh, that, that, Daddy has said it all. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, as as, as uh, just what uh, uh, who that is uh, the women are fan of. Who called you? Where are you going to? It's like mm. is this time around that I'm seeing that you know I'm the type that I don't like disturbance. So anytime she comes, oh, I'm going to this place. Okay, may God be with you. But anytime I tell I I, I tell her, oh, I'm going to see a friend. I'm going to do this. I'm going to see. We'll be like. Ah, what are you going to do there? Why is he? I, I'm like, is this woman, why is why is she like that? It's like I'm going to see someone behind her or something like that, which I'm not that type. Uh, I made her know me of not being that kind of people that I don't know. I don't know how to explain. I, I explain myself to it's like I'm the type that don't like this kind of humanizing and all that. Yeah. So I'm always focused. Anytime I have one, I have one. If I don't have, uh, I'm okay. Mm. Uh, oh, Papa, well, welcome. He's here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's, let's say hi to her. What's, what's her name? Her name is Sumaya. Sunaila. Sumaila. 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 Oh, Sumaya. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you Please. Her, Papa. You call her Papa. <laughs> yeah, she calls me Nawa. That means my. Oh, Awa, my. And you call her Papa. Okay, try and bring her to the camera and let's see if, if we can uh, have. Try and bring bring her. Let's see if we can talk to her. Uh, not engage her much, but, you know, say hi to her, sort of. 
And uh, yeah, if you just join us here on the show, this is our love series uh, we're running here on uh, Prime Morning. It's part of our Valentine uh, celebration. Of course, we've asked you to send in your pictures. You've sent them. Please go to the social media page and like them. It's on uh, uh, Joy Prime TV on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter. When you go there and you see any of the pictures, if it's yours, uh, make sure you share it and let others also come and comment. And the most comment and like pictures, by the way, we'll be having that, uh, you know, uh, treat we're giving out. So it's going to be exciting. You need to be a part of this. And uh, we're saying a big thank you once again to our sponsors for making it happen. La Palm Royal Beach Hotel, uh, Easy Grab, we're grateful. Uh, Kosovo Vota Hotel, uh, the world is the place you want to be. And also, like I said, a big thank you to my artist, Spa, uh, for making it happen as well. We're grateful to all of you for making sure that you celebrate our, you know, Valentine uh, uh, couples here. So some of the pictures that you're seeing on your screens on what Tuesday on Valentine's Day is going to be mega on this show. Uh, we're going to have a very, very exciting time together. There's going to be everything, everything Valentine. So make sure you don't miss out on that on Tuesday here on the show. Myself and my two Valentine babies will be here. Uh, Rosalind Feli and the CEO will be here for us to, uh, you know, do that. And so we make sure you're also uh, joining us on Tuesday for us to make that happen. But uh, today, uh, Reverend is also on the other side, helping us to understand some of the things that comes uh, with marriage. And uh, he's been explaining a lot to us. I'm sure you're also taking notes, uh, you know, and you're jotting down a few things that probably you're not doing right. You want to make it right. And so, Reverend, we'd like to say a big thank you to you as well. So, um, I've got my, I've got my uh, uh, team here. Where, where, uh, let, me, let me get to... Uh, okay, so there's something I wanted to find out. And uh, it has to do with some of the things that Rev said uh, in, in the issues uh, that come in marriages. So, uh, Sanam, Hi. Sanam let, let me find out. What, what are some of the things that you guys do to make your relationship or the marriage fun? Rev spoke about the fact that it's not always supposed to be like stiff, stiff, stiff. You know, are there specific things you do to lighten it up a bit? Yes. I think my husband is a quiet type, but then he loves to um, go out most of the time. So usually on weekends, um, we go for um, live band, reggae night, and he's my distant partner. Ah, concert together, eh? <laughs> <laughs> you, you do the concert no, together, no. okay? <laughs> so now, give me a moment. I think I think Sumaya is back. Uh, Sumaya is here right now. Let's see okay. if we can talk to her briefly as well. Uh, hello, Mrs. How are you? Okay. Um, I'll meet your microphone, uh, Majid. I'll mute the microphone for us, okay? Check, uh -huh, check the screen and I'll, mix, uh, I'll mute the microphone, sorry. Uh, so we can hear uh, Smile also speak to us. Hello, Mrs. Can you hear us? Yes, good morning. Good morning, how are you? <laughs> Fine, thank you. Awesome. We'll be waiting for our bread so we can have our tea before we step back to go. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, you're here with that. Uh, how has it been with uh, Majid like? Mmm... He's a cool type, loving and caring. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I hope you're not saying this because he's sitting next to you and he's pinching you small, small. Like, oh, no, 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 say, no. say it to my favorite. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. You guys are relatively new in this marriage thing. Or like, you know, you're looking forward to your one year anniversary and all of that. Um, yeah. I, 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 you're prepared for a long journey. I mean, no two ways about it. What are some of the things you are doing to make sure that it, it works for you? You're able to achieve that long term, uh, uh, you know, marriage that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. again. I'm asking, what, uh, uh, Smile, what are some of the things that you are doing to make sure that the marriage lasts? Um, Majid has been telling us what he has been doing. Uh, usually, leaving the home when he, you have problems, he doesn't want to be around so that it will turn into fights. You know, he, when you do certain things he doesn't like, he will just watch you and say, you know, my dear, do it this way, do it. What are you also doing in your part uh, to make sure that, you know, uh, you, you are able to keep the home? Okay. Me too, I make sure that whenever he says that he doesn't like something. I also abide by it. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And and so far it's been very very cordial. It's been good. It's working for you, right? Yes. 
Okay. Uh, thanks so much for, you know, speaking to us. Uh, we really appreciate the two of you and uh, we wish you the very best of your marriage. Uh, now you can maybe go and continue with the breakfast because once it's done with the interview, the next mm -hmm. thing is the breakfast because we, look, we start looking for trouble this morning. <laughs> but thanks a lot for talking to, <laughs> talking to us. Really appreciate you. Oh, uh, Rev. Yes. A lot of marriage collapsing and you seeing this. I'm sure, I'm sure you're happy. You're, you're happy you're looking at this. Because, yes, not all of them will work. But when you see, even like Jesus said, uh, if about 100 people are saved and two or one even come, I appreciate the fact that one has come to say thank you. You know, you sitting yeah. there and looking at this, uh, how does that make you feel? Yeah, it's, it's a nice one. Just like you are, we are saying, it's, it's a nice thing to see the way... Um, uh, my brother and the wife are, uh, you know, sitting together. But it's just, just like we all said, it's just 11 months. And I'm not saying that they are going to have problems in the future. No, I don't wish that for, that one for them at all. Never. Um, but but they, are, they, they have a long way to go. Yeah. A long way to go. Uh, yeah. And, and they have a lot to learn from both sides. Definitely, there will come a time that when kids start coming in, things will change because that is the time that the pressure will be mounting. Whether she can maintain the same way of taking care of the husband, and also taking care of the kids. Apart from that, their financial things are also going to change because here is the case that you have to start taking care of the kids. And is the husband going to be under pressure or not? Or, and is the wife also going to cut down certain things and will not also expect certain things? One of the things that they should also have to understand is that there will come a time that the husband's love will now be shifted to the kids more than the wife, especially when they have a daughter. And the, and the, and the, uh, the woman's love will also shift to the son when they have a son. But you see... Uh, it, it, it is a natural thing. One of the things I don't have to do is that if you are not careful, you have that kind of flow towards your daughter. If you are the man, and the man, the woman also have that natural flow to the to the daughter. It is natural, but you must always understand that one day the, the kids will leave and to be left to the, the two of you. So no matter what, you must always try to keep that kind of love and that kind of understanding between the two of you because your daughter your daughter will leave, your son will leave, and you will be left to your husband and your wife alone in the house. But it's just, they have a long way to go, and you wish them well. And I pray that, that they will have this kind of peace that they're having. Uh, uh, probably, just like they are saying, they did not just look at the event. They, look at, they looked at the marriage. A lot of young men and women did look at the marriage event like the wedding day. And right after the wedding, they have problems. So um, you must always think of what will happen after the event, because the event is just a day. The peace we have now, are we going to have the same peace after and the years ahead of us? And, and I think that that is what something that... that we should be worked on. My one, one, the one last thing I want to say is that it doesn't just come naturally. Mm -hmm. The love and the peace don't just come naturally. You have to work on it every time, practically. There will be a time that my brother and my sister, it will not just be a feeling. It will be something that you have to intentionally do. Because after two, three years, the sex, maybe your wife's appearance and the sex drive and other things will not be like you're having now. There will be a time that you can sleep beside her for a week and not feel for sex. But you have to still give her sex. Uh, okay? So mm -hmm. it will not just be the mutual thing and the kind of feeling that me who I'm into me and I like, I want to see her. I, I, admit, I miss her. Even the missing her that you have to call her and tell her will not be like something that to come naturally. You have to do it intentionally just to keep the marriage going because the feeling will go and now it comes with more of maturity than just feeling. I, 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 hope, I hope you understand me. Yeah. yeah. So, so it is something that you should work it out. Just like the Bible said that we should work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. The same way we work out our marriage with fear and trembling. It, 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 we must work it out every day. <clears throat> work it out every day. Work it out every day. Listen, one last thing I want people to understand is that you see, when the devil came into the picture, the Bible said their eyes got open, and now Adam saw oh. that he was naked, and Eve saw that he was naked. Now, Adam said, it is the woman who gave me, then Eve said, it is Satan. So anytime that your eyes get open, then you get to see the, the weakness of the other one. Now, my brother and my sister, who are very young and married, they are not seeing the weakness because they are blind in love. When they allow the devil to come in, their eyes will open. That is what they are going to see that my wife, no, 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 send an eye and get to meet My wife's legs are not that big, nice. Uh, and the tummy is becoming big. No, no, I didn't know that my husband said it was that big and all that. Because now the devil has entered and now your eyes are open, you are naked. And you are going to see everything, everything like you are now seeing now. Now, the privacy 
of the marriage couple, the privacy of the marriage couple, it should be naked in marriage. Mm. And that is a statement I want to end with. The privacy of the marriage couple should be naked. Why am I saying yeah. that? If your wife, as at this time, is able to hide his, her phone from you, and you don't know the password of your husband's phone or their wife's phone, there is a problem. Maybe a lot of people will not uh, accept this, but I don't, I don't see why you should be hiding your password and, and when your phone is being taken by your wife, you are running from the bathroom and you are, you are <laughs> doing everything to take it. I, you know, um, you, you, once, once you are married, the privacy should be naked. You should get to see everything about your wife, everything about your husband. There are, uh, I wish everybody well. I, there are four years and, and one year. Mm. Um, the 16-year journey for me has not been easy at all. has not been easy because I am the type that when you talk, I, I am not that quiet type like my, my, my brother is saying that he is quiet. I am not that quiet type. No, 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 not at all. I can say anything. I am that free type. My wife is the quiet type. But also, uh, it's on social, it's, we are on media, but on, 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 you know, I will also, you know, book long, that kind of talk. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah. Rev, Rev, and, Rev and, and, speaking and, about that, Speaking about that, and, and just so we're able to wrap up the conversation today, uh, speaking yeah. about that, so if married couples are coming to you for assistance in terms of solving their problems, when you have a problem, where do you go, God? Um, I have, I also have, um, it's, it's a very, I think that it's a very, a very important, a very important question that you've asked. When, when you see every human being should have somebody who will say stop and you will stop. Yeah. If you are a human being and you don't have anybody who will say stop, that you stop, then you have a problem. Mm. It is not everybody who can talk to me, but there is always somebody who should be able to talk to you for you to stop whatever you are doing. And and you see, the last place where you have to go when you have issues are your parents and your family. I think that as Christians, you must have everybody should have a spiritual father who is also very mature, who is concerned about the relationship that you are having, that any time you have an issue, you call him first. After praying to God about it, the next person is that you call your, your spiritual father, who is very mature, or somebody you call a father in the Lord, then you can go to the person talk to. I have a spiritual father. I was raised by uh, two, two pastors. They are Reverend Ben Pahi, is in, um, one is in Kumas, one is in Accra, one is Holy Hill Chapel, Assemblies of God, uh, but then the, the main one is in Kumas here. Anytime I have an issue, and no, I will not listen to anybody at all. I will listen to him. Okay. And 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 and, and you have somebody like that. Okay. Yeah. okay. So uh, I always have somebody that I run to. There have been times that you have had issues, and you come to the house, you sit with us, and you start talking, talking to us. Last time I had an issue that my wife went to the parents. It became a very dangerous. It became very dangerous for us because that was the mistake she did, and I think that she will never do it again. The man is always the right, the spiritual father is always the right place to go. Just like they come to me, I also go to him. Okay, okay. Rev, uh, thank you so much for spending time with us. We really appreciate you. It's been very, very insightful and educative, like our couple said. And uh, we're grateful that you're able to join us this morning. God bless you. God bless you too. God Great. Bless you too. And that's All Reverend right. Osei Kakari Anno. He's the head pastor, Christian Center Assembly of God in Kumase, spending time with us this morning. And uh, let me go to our couple and say a big thank you to you. Congratulations again. And we wish you the very best of the remaining years ahead of you. It's going to be difficult, we know. But we are hopeful that you'll be able to cross and make a very impactful, uh, you know, uh, marriage. And one that a lot of people can also be, be uh, happy uh, about all right so uh, before you go though uh, let me speak to Senam Senam so tell us about what you do and uh, let us uh, also promote what we're, we're doing for the miss uh, the most photogenic couple uh, you can promote yourself as well and let people vote for you okay Senam so it's your turn okay thank you so much for the opportunity I'm so grateful actually I'm uh, an entrepreneur I am into um, soap making, like detergent making. And then I also have a catering seven. That is April's Delight. So you can actually follow me on Instagram, on Facebook, on any social media platform. And we will, we will be good to serve you. I mean, we are here to serve the whole world. So come have a tasty meal at April's Delight. We are at Accra and then Takwa Takra Day. So we are good to go to anywhere, 
all over the country. If you're having an event anywhere, we are here to serve you with tasty, yummy meals always. Awesome. And awesome. Please like my picture, yep. comment, <laughs> and share. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Let me go to Majid. Majid, are you there? Oh, we lost Majid. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. But you can also uh, go on social media and follow Majid and the wife. Uh, you know, uh, they also have their picture over there. So you can go and like it, comment it and share it. So they can also get some comments and likes uh, to eventually make them qualify for the uh, next stage of the competition. So it's it's just the most photogenic couple that we're doing. And it's all about Valentine's season. So please go ahead and uh, send your pictures to us. It's been an insightful conversation. Many thanks to you for also watching. We're not done yet. We've got the last conversation coming up. IB's on standby to bring us uh, the latest uh, updates uh, in the world of entertainment as we wrap it all up for this uh, day here on Prime Morning. Now, don't forget that this conversation is going to continue tomorrow here on Prime Morning at 6 a.m. all the way till 10. So make sure you're a part of it. But then IB is up next with uh, uh, some juicy, juicy information in the world of entertainment. Stay with us.